Hi, this is Roger Menzel, and uh, we're in Kayanza, Rwanda, with uh, John Africa, the headmaster of the uh, New Life Christian Academy, and uh, Craig Feller, who's the uh, uh, principal of Westgate Elementary School in um, Manassas, Virginia. And uh, it's a great opportunity for them to kind of share some thoughts and ideas about uh, what's going on in their respective schools and the uh, challenges, opportunities, and successes that they've had in uh, both environments. And uh, so we're going to let them talk a little bit and uh, share it with, uh, with you. Uh, and uh, here we go. What do you do as far as building it into the curriculum and working with kids to um, help them perform at high levels? Thank you very much for that question. Uh, what we do, first of all, we have um, uh, what we call uh, career guidance. We guide them, even when before uh, before they leave, uh, right from, uh, let's say, um, grade 9 to go to high school. Because a child who graduates from uh, grade 9 to go to high school, he has to really know what he's going to be doing in high school, let's say, uh, combinations. And what, what we do here, uh, we first help them to identify, uh, you know, subjects who they think they are well competent with, who they, can, who they, they think they can pass high. So uh, that is uh, done in, in um, uh, groups of four or five with the teacher who is in charge of uh, career guidance. We first see their potentials and then we, we advise them accordingly. Uh, then we have also, uh, we, 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 we divide them into smaller groups where they will, they will sit and discuss how best to prepare for, for, for these exams. Yeah. And uh, we assign um, each group a teacher in that particular that, you know, subject, if it is science. They will have uh, a teacher who is uh, well comfortable with chemistry or biology to take on that group to be able to really help them and, and you know, to share with them and to be, to, be, to be able to help them, even those who are weaker, you know, to learn from their friends mm -hmm. and to be able to, uh, uh, to identify the weak areas in some of these, uh, you know, students and then they're be, they able to help them after, after having them in small groups. So thereafter, uh, we know for sure that uh, if a particular uh, group has uh, maybe three or four individuals who are really weak, then we do the middle classes for them. Okay. Yeah. Then, then thereafter, we know that for sure they are now at a certain stage where they can perform better. Mm -hmm. So we have discovered that uh, small groups works much better than you know just have a class of uh, 50 students or uh, 45 students. Yeah. So that's what we do. We do something very similar when we look at strengths and weaknesses of students and we divide them into small groups and provide interventions and in sm small group instruction to, the, in areas in which they need. So it sounds like we're very much yeah, si similar. Yeah, it sounds similar. Yeah, yeah it's great. Okay. So, um, when students need move from primary to secondary school, um, we understand that there's the, the environment changes significantly. Um, with secondary being a boarding situation, how does that change the dynamics of the family, student, teacher uh, involvement in the learning process? Um, yeah, thank you so much for that question. Yeah, when uh, our school setup has both boarding and those who go back home in the community, uh, more especially to, uh, to, to those who are sponsored and, they, and, uh, and their families are within Kayonza, uh, within the, you know, the proximity of the school, they don't leave on campus. They study and then go back to, to uh, uh, go back home in the evening. And then we have also those who come from far like Kigali and other parts of Rwanda. They come and they, they, they reside at, at campus. However, we always have, uh, you know, uh, parents, teachers meeting, which are, which are done uh, every, 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 every month. Uh, uh, in this meeting, what happens is that uh, we call parents. It could be a meeting organized uh, uh, by uh, the, uh, the deputy headmaster in charge of academic to come and talk particularly about academic and performance of the children. So parents will get to come, sit with the teachers, and then talk about the performance of the students and talk about the role of the parent in the education of the children. So these, happen, these meetings happen monthly. Uh, at least we have uh, we have uh, we have uh, a meeting organized every month, 
And you know, in our time, we, we have uh, three months per term. So those are three meetings. Okay. So we don't get to, we don't have a problem uh, whereby parents are far away from us. We, we call them, organize those meetings. If a child has a problem in, a, let's say, in terms of discipline or in terms of uh, performance in a particular discipline, we call the parents, we invite the parents to come and sit with the teacher, with the child, and then we, we, we brainstorm and then you know, help the child. If it's an issue of discipline, it's still the same. We come and uh, we, we, we bring the parents, they come and sit down, we do the counseling together, and then we, we make sure that this, this child is not really left to the teacher or the special, special alone. And we, we make sure that there's a, a parent's involvement in this. Yeah, so boarding school, uh, whether, whether you're a boarding child or you go back to the community, it's still the same. If it's a meeting that, that involves parents, the parents will come on that particular day, whether, whether the kids are in boarding school or whether the kids go back home. So we'll have a meeting every month to really talk about the issues that affect the, 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 the kids at school. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, what, what do you... Um, what would you like to know about you know the educational challenges and approaches that may apply to your situation? So um, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I would like to know much about so uh, um, how you people deal with uh, with uh, uh, you know in your area. How do you deal with all levels? You have a class of let's say twenty kids or twenty five kids, but all these kids are uh, they, they they don't really you know. They don't have the same understanding levels. Right. How do you deal with such a, such kind of of kids, strong learners? How do you right. get them to the level of, of uh, their classmates? Yeah. And then the other question that I would maybe want to put forward uh, that concerns our, our situation here is uh, discipline issues. There are kids naturally who are who are who are very lazy. They give it homework, they don't do it. Right. And uh, you know, uh, today you sit down with them to talk to them about uh, the importance of, of having to do their, their, their coursework and teach them time. But the following day, he does the same thing. Right. <laughs> and some of the, some of their parents are really not learned; they do not know even the value of education. Right. Literally, you, it's just a child left to, to, to teach her. Right. You know, how do you go about that? Well, that's a very good question. And, yeah. and although we're in two different countries, we have a similar problem. <laughs> Um, I guess. You know, but I think you know dealing with students that are not learning at the same rate as others. Mm -hmm. um, we have done and put some things in place at our school um, where we have extended the school day, mm -hmm. and so after this, after the last bell rings or before school starts, um, we have teachers work with those individual kids before the rest of the class comes. Okay. And so that is something we have found that has been very successful yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. um, we've also been able to provide additional reading support during mm -hmm. the day mm -hmm. with an additional teacher who goes and pulls small groups of kids in reading or in math mm -hmm. and works with them to mm -hmm. get them up to speed. But mm -hmm. that is a challenge for us. Oh, okay. um, so, yeah. What about the parents, uh, These uh, the, the kids whose parents really mm -hmm. do not even want to tie up? When they call a meeting and doesn't really know the essence, I mean, doesn't right. understand the, the importance of education, and you know, literally, the child is just uh, it's, he's just left it to the teachers to decide the fate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what happens? That well, we, we, we certainly run into that as well. And, uh -huh. um, what we try to do is if we will set up meetings with parents and mm -hmm. the teachers and, mm -hmm. and the administrators, myself and my assistant, mm -hmm. um, we'll attend those meetings. Now, if they don't come, mm -hmm. we go to their house. Mm -hmm. And we try to make it clear to them mm -hmm. about what is the consequences of their child not mm -hmm. doing well. Mm -hmm. um, as far as a student not doing homework or doing things in the school, mm -hmm. um, what we say is if you don't do on your time mm -hmm. or on our time, mm -hmm. we're going to have additional time for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe things that you want to do, preferred activities, mm -hmm. you're now going to have mm -hmm. these things that you haven't completed. So holding kids accountable, mm -hmm. um, having high expectations for kids, mm -hmm. um, and really making it relevant to them and, mm -hmm. and understand, making sure that they understand and parents understand mm -hmm. what are the consequences for their kids not doing well mm -hmm. on the testing, for example. Mm -hmm. um, for us, if kids leave our school in, in fifth grade, they go to the sixth grade level. Mm -hmm. If they have not performed well on mm -hmm. the state examination, Mm -hmm. um, similar to your your mm -hmm. high stakes test yeah. in here, mm -hmm. um, they're not able to take um, certain classes at the middle school mm -hmm. level, 
and um, they get put into remedial classes, which they oftentimes don't need to be in, but because they haven't been motivated in elementary school. Mm. And so we try to make that very real to them in a very real way, mm. um, but it's difficult. Mm. I know. Yeah, yeah to us is a, is, a, is, a, is a really big challenge because most of the such kind of kids, you always uh, find that their parents have never gone to school, they're going to school. Yeah. Even even when you tell them that uh, they're gonna miss class, right. they don't care. Right. And next time when the child is repeated, yeah. the, the next thing you know, he's dropped it dro dropped out of school. Right. Yeah. So that's to us it's a, it's a big big challenge. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So we sometimes just have to take it upon ourselves yep. to find means, you know, to really, you know, <laughs> push this kid to to study and to work hard. And sometimes we 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 we, we even. And make sure that we see to the child mm -hmm. and make sure that the, the homework is done. Right. Yeah. yeah. When we were just uh, seeing. Right. Otherwise, we know that we, if he goes back home, it won't help him. Won't help him. Yeah. yeah. We have the same situation. We, we run into that. We, we constantly battle with that. Yeah. So, you know, one of the, th the questions that I had for you, and you, mm -hmm. you talked about it a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. your school is, is one of the top in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you talked about some of the things that. Um, you think led to that success mm -hmm. and so if you could just kind of share mm. those uh, mm. um, and, and kind of elaborate on why do you think mm. the students here mm. um, have been so successful mm -hmm. and um, yeah thank you yeah I told you uh, that 90% uh, of our kids uh, the kids who attend our school they are sponsored mm -hmm. and that means uh, their families have no means to really support them to go to school. So to, to our kids, if, if they're given an opportunity to come to school, uh, they know for sure if they, if they don't use that opportunity very well, they have no chance to go to school. So when they're here, they do everything possible to make sure that they, they really, you know, succeed. That means they have to work hard. That means they have to follow school rules and regulations. They don't want to be kicked out of school because they know that's the last thing they, they ever right. wanted to, to happen right. to them. That's number one. Number two is uh, the kind of uh, environment that our kids are brought up in. Uh, besides just uh, teaching, we know for sure that these are our kids. We behave like parents and they, they're like our kids. Right. So we do parenting. Mm -hmm. And also we, 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 we love them. We tell them that we encourage them. We tell them that we're here for you. We want you to do this because we know that you're, you're the future, you know, leaders of this nation. So they know that pretty sure well that, uh, that, that they have to really, you know, you know, um, take care of as parents. And they are, that's an act of discipline. You know, discipline has really been, uh, you know, a very good component mm -hmm. of our success. Right. So the other thing is, uh, uh, like I said, uh, the curriculum that is being used here, we, we did participate, our teachers did participate in uh, drawing the curriculum. So we have uh, qualified teachers, and they know what they're doing. Right. When it comes to really teaching, we have the best teacher that, we, that this kind of can ever think of. Yeah. So that is uh, also another component of our, right. of our, of our success. It's a great yeah. formula for success and it's obviously working. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm.